Hey, this is Mr. Perez. In this video, we are going to do a bunch of problems with fractions. Oh, what fun. Before we get started, we got to get out. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to do a bunch of problems with fractions? All right, Charlie, quit four around. Let's get started right there. Four thirds subtract three fourths plus five six. Notice we have addition and subtraction with fractions. Therefore, we need to have a lowest common denominator here. Now, we have a 3, a 4, and a 6. The smallest number that a 3, 4, and a 6 divide evenly into is 12. So that's our lowest common denominator. Now let's change each fraction to have that denominator. The 4 thirds we need to multiply by 4 over 4. 3 fourths multiply by 3 over 3. And the 5 6 by 2 over 2. Remember, how do we multiply fractions, Charlie? Straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Very nice there, Charlie. Okay, so 4 thirds turns into 16 twelfths. 3 fourths turns into 9 twelfths, and the 5 6 turns into 10 twelfths. All our denominators are the same, so we work with our numerators. Our denominator remains unchanged, so we have 16 subtract 9 plus 10 in our numerator over 12, and so our answer is 17 over 12. Don't forget to circle or box your answer. Oh, what fun! Let's do another one. Here we have negative 2 fifths plus 3 tenths. Subtract 5 fourths. We are adding and subtracting, so we need a lowest common denominator. Now, what's the smallest number that a 5, a 10, and a 4 divide evenly into? Remember the little trick? Start with your largest denominator. In this case, it's a 10. Does 10 work? No. So let's try a multiple of 10. Try 10 plus 10, which is 20. Does 20 work? Yes, it does. They all divide into 20. If 20 did not work, then try 30. But since 20 works, that's our lowest common denominator. So each fraction can be changed to have a denominator of 20. For negative 2 fifths, we multiply by 4 over 4 because 5 times 4 is 20. 3 tenths, we multiply by 2 over 2 because 10 times 2 is 20. And the 5 fourths, we multiply by 5 over 5 because 4 times 5 is 20. So we get negative 8 twentieths plus 6 twentieths subtract 25 twentieths. There we go. And now our denominators remain unchanged. We work with our numerators. So we have negative 8 plus 6 subtract 25 over 20. And now performing the calculation in the numerator, we get negative 27 over 20. Because negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, negative 2 subtract 25 is negative 27. That is our answer. But we can put the negative sign out in front and write it as negative 27 over 20. Okay, let's try this one. Negative one-fourth. Subtract negative five-thirds. Now, Charlie, what happens when you subtract a negative number? You add the opposites, right. It changes to addition. So we have negative fourth plus a positive five-thirds. Remember, subtracting a negative number. Subtraction changes to addition, and the negative five-thirds change to its opposite, which is a positive five-thirds. And now, we need a lowest common denominator. The smallest number that a 4 and a 3 divide evenly into is a 12. When you have a 4 and a 3, start with a 4. Does 4 work? No. How about 4 plus 4, which is 8? Does that work? No. 3 doesn't divide evenly into 8. So try 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. That works, because both a 4 and a 3 divide evenly into 12. And so, negative 1 fourth, we multiply top and bottom by 3. And the 5 thirds, top and bottom by 4. And that gives us negative 3 twelfths plus 20 twelfths. Our numerator becomes negative 3 plus 20, and our denominator remains unchanged. It stays at 12. And now negative 3 plus 20 is 17, and our denominator is 12, so our answer is 17 twelfths. Let's do another one. All right, Charlie. Now here, we have an x in the denominator. Woo, don't get scared. This is getting into algebra, right? Well, what happens when you have a variable, a number, I'm sorry, a letter in the denominator? Well, our lowest common denominator is 5x, because you have to have a 5 and you have to have an x in your denominators. So if you think about it this way, the 4x is missing the 5. So let's multiply top and bottom by 5. But the 3 fifths is missing the x, so let's multiply top and bottom by x. And if we do that and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we have 20 over 5x for our first fraction. Our second fraction becomes 3x 
over 5x. Now notice both the denominators are the same. Remember, our denominator will remain unchanged. So our answer becomes 20 subtract 3x over 5x. And that's our final answer. 20 subtract 3x you cannot add. They are not like terms. And that is our final answer there. So let's try this problem over here. Now we have a division and an addition. So we have to follow order of operations. We have 4 thirds divided by 3 halves plus 5 thirds. We're going to change the division of the fraction to multiplying by its reciprocal. So we have 4 thirds times 2 thirds plus 5 thirds. Now remember, you have to follow order of operations. You must perform multiplication before you do the addition. And remember, multiplying fractions is easy, right? Straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And so if we multiply those two fractions together, we get 8 ninths and bring down our work, plus 5 thirds. Now we need the lowest common denominator because we're adding. And we have a 9 and a 3. Let's start with a 9, which is the larger denominator. Does 9 work? Yes, it does, because 3 divides evenly into 9. So our lowest common denominator is 9. We do not need to change the 8 ninths. But the 5 thirds, we multiply top and bottom by 3 to get that denominator to be 9. And so now we get 8 ninths plus 15 ninths. And notice our denominator remains unchanged. Our numerator is 8 plus 15, so that gives us 23 over 9, and that is our final answer. All right, let's try one more here. 2 fifths plus 8 ninths divided by 4 thirds. Okay, we're going to change our division to multiplication. So we bring down our work and we're going to change the dividing 4 thirds by times 3 fourths. And we have to perform the multiplication before we perform the addition, right? Don't forget order of operations. So notice here, we can cross cancel. 8 and 4 have a common factor of 4, so let's divide that out those become 2 over 1. And the 3 and the 9 have a common factor of 3, so let's divide that out. That becomes a 1 and a 3. And now, let's perform the multiplication here. We get 2 fifths plus 2 thirds. Now we are adding the fraction, so now we need that lowest common denominator. Our denominators are 5 and 3. Okay, start with the largest one. Does 5 work? No. Let's try multiples of 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Does that work? No, 3 does not divide evenly into 10. Let's try the next multiple. 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Does 15 work? Yes, it does, because 3 divides evenly into 15. So, in this case, our lowest common denominator is 15. We're going to change both fractions to have that denominator. 2 fifths, we need to multiply top and bottom by 3, because in our denominator, 5 times 3 is 15. But the 2 thirds needs a 5 over 5, because 3 times 5 is 15 in that denominator. So when you multiply the fractions straight across the top and straight across the bottom, you end up with 6 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. Now they have the same denominator, so we can add. Remember, we work with the numerators. Our denominator remains unchanged. 6 plus 10 is 16. Our denominator is 15. So there's our final answer, 16 over 15. Whew. That was a tough one. Let's take a break, and we'll see you again soon.